Hello there, guys. Welcome back to another tutorial up to the time. Today, we'll be looking at doors. So we'll be looking at parts of a door, door isometric, door details, door types, and door symbols. But first, let us start off with what is a door? We read a hinge, sliding, or revolving barrier at the entrance to a building, room, or vehicle, or in the framework of a cupboard. So this describes a door. Here are some typical doors, as you can see. And over here on the right, it shows the parts of the door. All right. So now that we have an idea what a typical door is and what uh, how a door functions, we can then move on now to door types. So let's go back over to AutoCAD. All right, so we have here door types and we have them displayed in elevation. So what are the door types? We have flush, one panel, two panel, three panel, louver, panel with glass, French, and multi-panel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show these door types, show an image of these door types. All right. So here we have a flush door. This is the first one. And I have here may have glass. Some flush doors have glass. Some are actually plain solid wood. This is a plain solid wooden flush door. Let us move on. So what's next? It's not in any particular order. So this one would be the French door. Down here, this is the French door. As you can see, the glass panels, one, two, three, four. This one has one, two, three, four, five, five um, panels um, coming down. A similar design. Let's move on now from the French door to see what else we have next here. The louver door. Louver door. Where would you find a louver door? You would find a louver door um, on the outside to a cupboard, to a closet. And the reason being is these louvers allow ventilation. So just go here and I will just show you what I mean, right? These louvers allow ventilation, cross ventilation in there. So imagine that's the wind that goes in and then wind that comes out too, right? All right. So those are my wind arrows as the wind goes in and the wind comes out. That's what the louvers allow. Now let us move on. Let me see what else we have here. We have the multi-panel door, which is right here. Yeah. Uh, how did it get the name multi-panel? Let's have a look. You can see here they have panels. One, two, three, four, five, six. And all these squares create the panels. So you have three at the bottom. And then you go up, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's three by seven, that's 21. So that's 21 right away in there. And it's usually made out of solid timber. And these panels are also timber. Um, you would see this door at the front of a house before you go in or an office building or, uh, yeah. This is an entrance door to greet persons before they enter, right? And it's very strong. Let's see, one panel door. So let's go to this one panel door where we have here, one panel door. And this represents the, the panel here. This is the panel, the one panel. And this is the one panel. Very simple doors. Where would you find these doors? You'll find these doors just before you go into a bedroom in a house. Usually find them there. Um, let's move over now. 
panel with glass will be this one. So here will be the panel, our panels. Down here. And above will be the glass. Right here. I'll probably use a stronger blue. That would be the glass. And here will be the glass. So let's look at this door. This door is interesting. It's half panel, half glass. But let's look and see where the glass is and why the glass is, where it is. The glass is at the top and the panels are at the bottom. Let me just use a different color. The panels are at the bottom. Why is this so? All right. The glass is here at the top for to look out. Visual. Visual reasons here. That's why the glass is there. And down here, this is also for protection, you know, also for privacy. You don't want anyone looking through your house at a low level. You can actually put a curtain at the top, but down here at the bottom, you want it to be solid, right? So that people wouldn't be able to see into your house. So this is also for security, security, security reasons, and privacy. Right. All right, so it's for privacy and security reasons. And some people, what they do is they actually place a curtain where the glass is so that if they need to look out, they can come and pull back the curtains and peek out and then just go along about their business. And others won't be able to see in to the building from outside, but this also allows for natural lighting to come into the building. So another reason we have here, I would put allows natural lighting, natural light, allows natural light to enter. All right, so those are the reasons why people would probably go for a half panel, half glass. So you get the best of both worlds. You know, you get a fairly secure door, but you also you get an opportunity to connect to the outside and to bring light into the building. So let us continue. Okay, so this is a three panel door. Let's see, where would you have that? We have a three panel door right here. And you can basically understand why this is called three panel. This is one panel here, two, three. You get our three panels right here. Again, you'll find this door in a home. You can either, this can either be a bedroom door or a bathroom door in a home. But these panel doors, you usually find them in homes. So the one panel, two panel, or three panels, you can find those in a home. Just a variation on the style, all right? So let's see what else we have here. Right, the two panel. And this is a two panel with a slight different design. Uh, panel one, panel two. Panel one, panel two. Again, you will find these in homes, most residents. Um, these are bedroom doors, or these can actually be doors to enter to the washroom, bathroom, laundry room. Um, yeah, typical home doors. Let's just leave it there with two panels, all right? So what else do we have here? Um, I think that's all of them. We went through all of them. Yep, we went through the louver, we went through the panel with glass, the French, the multi-panel. Yeah, so these are all, these are the typical door types you will come across in building drawing. Each student, I would advise each student to have 
his or her own catalog of doors that they can pull from is easier rather than every time you're working on a project, you need to draw a door from scratch, all right? I would always advise draw these doors and save them, save them as a block and uh, insert them into your template so that you can reference them, reference them anytime and easily. We're gonna move on to door symbols. So let me just maximize here. We move on to door symbols and we look at how to represent a door in plan. And then we've just shown you elevations, but these elevations have a little bit more detail to them. As you can see, there are frames around them. And then there is a skirting at the bottom and uh, it also has the lock set and it has more detailing on the paneling. So let us look at firstly, how we're going to draw a plan for a double door. I'm gonna also draw a plan for a single door. And then I'm gonna draw the plan for a, you know what, let's do the bifold door. So these three doors I'm going to draw quickly and show you how to draw them on plan how to save them, and then where to find them. So let us do that now. But first, let's go through all of them. So this is a double door, double single acting swing door, double single acting swinging door. I would just call this a double door and move on from there. But this is the correct term. All right, how to describe this door. So let's see how we're gonna get this in now. So the first thing first is when creating a door, we need to know the distance that the door is going to be spanning, right? The distance, the opening. So let me just put some measurements here onto this so as to make this a little easier. So I move from edge to edge and this door is 1903, all right? And what is the thickness of the frame? The thickness of the frame is about 150 millimeters. And then what is the thickness of an actual door? Very important. The thickness of a door is about 50 mil. So with all that information, I have everything I need. All right. The thickness of the door and the frame is 50 mil. The width of the frame is 150. So let us go about trying to draw this now. I'm going to first come over to my doors and window there. Yeah. And then I'm going to start off by drawing a line, which is um, a vertical line. And then I'm going to offset it the distance of 1903. Offset 1903. And then I offset that distance. So that's my door opening here. All right. So let me just um, highlight that right now. This is. Right now, my door opening. So I'll put here, door opening space, door, door opening, right? And now what am I gonna do with this? Now I need to work in. So let me just explain this. I'll be working, I'll be offsetting in because it's the extent of the door. So now we work in. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create the frame, the frames on both sides. So I'll be creating this frame and I'll be creating that frame. And that frame is a thickness of 50 by the height of 150. So let us offset our 50 in. So all the offset 50 goes in on both sides. Good. So at this stage now I need to create a horizontal line so that I can start putting in the thickness here of 150. So now I'm going to offset up 150 millimeters. Good. So practically got my frame in, which is my door frame. So the door can actually fit into that space because it has a frame. I'm going to clear the joints now and let us trim so far what we have. So 
So I've trimmed my frames. You can even trim them. Yeah. So I just have my frames all trimmed. Now I need to attach my door to here. But seeing this is going to be a double door, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line from frame to frame. And I can find the middle by just hovering over the middle. So that's my middle right here. This is very important while drawing a double door. All right. I'm going to come to either corner and hit C for circle and open up a circle from the edge of the frame to the center. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. This represents my door arc. This is the path which the door will travel to open. All right. And now I'm going to insert the actual door itself connected to the frame by just simply drawing a line from the edge of the frame to where it touches the arc up at 90 degrees. So it touches the first quadrant of the circle. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. All right. This is not the full door because we need to give the door thickness. A lot of students tend not to give things thickness. So this needs a thickness. That needs a thickness also to be considered a door. The thickness is 50. So we're going to offset in because that's what we're doing, 50. And we're going to offset in 50 on that side. So offset 50, one, two. Now all that's left is for us to clean this door up by trimming. And we can get a nice door. So we don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. And essentially, that's how we create a door, a door opening for a double door, right? Now, say I wanted to save this. Say I want to save it. I would grab it. Grab it by blue grab or green grab. I could have green grab, select the whole thing, or I could have blue grab and select the whole thing. It doesn't matter at that stage. And then I'm going to type in BL, which stands for block, as you can see there. So the first thing is I'm going to save this as a block. Enter. Now it's already been highlighted. So it shows a little preview of what it looks like right here. And all I need to do in this place is to create a name for it. So let's give this a name now, all right? And in the name, we are going to put in the size, which is 1903. So I'm going to say double door um, 1903. That's a double door 1903. And then I go, okay. Now, that's all save and that's all good. So I can get rid of this. And I should be able to bring it back in because I have it saved. So where do I find this now? Where do I find the door once I've saved it? Go over to insert. Go to insert block. Click here. And let's just look for it. And uh, it's right here. Double door 1903. Now, this is a bit tricky. I need to find out why when I insert my things from the template, they always um, are away from the join. So I just grab this and I bring this back over to my join. I know it's going to be there, but the position always elude me, you know? So this is our double door. This is our double door. And let's draw the single door, which is similar. So we're going to draw the double door. I'm going to draw the single door. And then I'm going to draw the bifold louver door. OK? So let's have a look at this single door. So let's set back up. First thing, we need to find out the distance of the door opening. So I measure from the edge, which is outside, outside of the frame, to outside the frame. And wow, a nice number of 1,000. So we can work with a number of 1,000. Let's move. Alpha line. Uh, pull this line up. 
bursting, and then I offset a thousand. That's a thousand there. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to create the frames. These frames are 50 by 150. So offset 50. All right, we need to create a baseline. So we can create a baseline down here. I just create a random baseline. And from there, I offset 150 up. Probably wondering why am I offsetting 150 up? The 150 up represents the frame. That was the thickness and that then would be the width of the frame, right? So that's what 150 represents. Now, now that that's in, we need we can trim these so as not to confuse us. I like to trim at this stage. And uh, we can even trim in here too, because we no longer need in there. So we just have the frames, the frames right there, alpha line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a circle now. Sorry, C for circle. And we create a circle from this point here, end point, to touch this end point. Again, we are always working with the inside points now at this stage. So I'm working with that inside point and that inside point at this stage, right? C for circle, I snap it here to that inner point, and then I snap it here to this inner point. So that creates my circle. And now what I need to do is I need to create my door. Come back to this inner point and go straight up to the quadrant. Then I'm going to offset 50 in, because that represents the thickness of my door. Let me just close this down here so that it will be a full shape. And now I'm going to trim. And again, that's my door. That's my door right there. At 1,000 millimeters, that's the door opening. I wouldn't bother to save this door at this stage. I've just gone through that. I'm going to leave that door on. And let us now look at another sorry, another plan. How to create the bifold doors. These might be a bit tricky. So one of the things that we need to know is the opening. What's the size of the opening? So let's do that again. The size of this opening. What's this opening size? 2,787 is the opening size, right? All right. This opening will be divided by four. All right. That opening will be divided by four. The thickness there of that wall is 150. As we know, the thickness of a door is usually 50. Let's see, uh, I can't get that to snap there properly. Uh, it's not snapping there properly, but the thickness that we use, that we normally use is 50. And uh, the opening is 200. 2,787. So let's just set back at that. And then we're going to divide this opening into four. And we're going to use the, the size of each division to create a door. All right? So let's just go. So the first thing is I'm going to draw my wall, right? And then offset 2,787. And that there is my opening. Now, I put in some walls in here. So just draw a horizontal line, offset it 150 up. Or you can even offset it down, but I'll set it up for this one. I'll just trim. So in here represents the door opening, in here represents the actual frame that is going to be on. So I'll, what I'll do. Is I'll do that, all right? And then I'll use a different color, like I have done before. I use a reference line between there to there. Now, 
what else do I need to do? Well, I need to divide this line into four pieces. So we go over to the command divide and to access that command, we press div. As you can see down there, it appears in the command bar. Enter. Then it asks me to select object to divide. I select the object and then it asks me number of segments. Um, I want four. So type in four, hit enter, and they're there. However, you're not able to see them because I turned off my points. So I need to turn back on my points. How do I access my point menu? P type. P, T Y P E, represents point type. And good. So I'm in the point style menu now. And the point style that I'm on is a dot. That's why we are not able to see them. So I need to move off of a dot, which I call a speck of dust, over to another expression. And I'm going to increase the size to four, right? And uh, voila, now you're able to see the points on the screen. Good. So now what we need to do is we need to measure the distance between point to point so that we can get the average size of what each door would be. So it appears that the, the, the average size, the average distance between each point, they should all be equal, is 697. So we know our doors are going to be about 600 and 97. All right. Now, the next thing that I want to find out if I can pull from here, I will go into this block and I really am interested in this angle. So I'm going to select that line and go over to properties and let's see the angle. The angle they're using there is 304, 236, 304, and again, 236. That's why I'm looking down here for the angle. So I can see the angle that they're using. Uh, 304 and 236. That's the angle. So what does that mean then? That I can come here and I can pitch an angle at 304 at a distance of 697. And I should get back everything I want. So I'm just going to pull this line out and then I'm going to punch in the angle. For you guys at home, you can use tab. Once you are in the line command, you can press tab and you can move from entering a line distance to inserting an angle. Or for some others, you can use hit shift and press the less than symbol at the same time to activate the angle menu. And then I'll press in 236. So that 236 went in that direction. However, I didn't want it to go in that direction. So what I can do is I can mirror it or I can just redo the same process and use the angle 304. So I think I'll redo and use the angle 304. All right, so let us go there, 304. Is the angle now? Yeah, that's in. That looks good. But the distance that I want is 697. How can I put in that distance? I can put in that distance by using a circle. So let me show you. C for circle. C for circle. Enter. Select this point here, which is the end point, and open it to 697. For those of you who have done geometry would understand that you can measure distances by using a circle. You do not always have to use a line or use the distance or use, sorry, the dimension tool. You can use a circle and get the distance. Actually, I prefer using a circle when measuring my distances because the circle goes all around and I know at that distance of 697 is the whole radius around from that point. So let's move on from there. Um, now I need to give this door thickness. The thickness I'm going to be using is 50. 50 mil as usual. And I offset that just like that. So that door has a thickness. I'm now going to finish off the door thickness. And down here it has that. So that's my 697 in. 
but now I need to do the opposite. So what I can do is I can, let me just make sure that these lines are connected. Good, trim. Good, and then what I can do from here is I can mirror this. I think I'll do that. So am I to mirror, select everything, and this is my mirror line right here at this end point. And I'm going to pull my mirror line up. And it asks me, erase source objects, yes, no. And I say no, because I want to keep my source. So I've kept my source and I've mirrored it. And this represents now one um, door that has been divided into two, all right? Now, all I need to do is to copy this door and stick it onto the other side, to the right side. So I'll do that. So I'll grip the whole door, CO for copy, and then I'll move this over to this position. All right? And that's how I express my door openings for bifold doors. Let's see, do I have an image of a bifold door around here? Let's look here. Yes, I do. These are what bifold doors look like. As you can see, the image, sorry, the hinge is right here in the middle, which allows the door to fold, right? Mainly you will find these bifold doors made from timber. And you, where would you find them? You will find them in residences and they're used to divide the space. So sometimes people have a large space and they want to actually divide it by placing a door between the two rooms. And this, these doors are very convenient when you're actually opening up to create two spaces, sorry, when you want to connect two spaces to form one space. People use by four doors to divide the space, but then when they want to open up to create one space, the bifold door actually slips back and opens up that space wide and you're not able to see the door when the door is folded properly. So the door fits into the corner neatly and you're able to get a large space. Uh -huh. And that's what these doors are mainly used for. Or some people just like the doors and they use them whenever they can because they like the, the aesthetics of the door. All right, so let's move back on to CAD now. That's how you draw a bifold door right there. Simple, easy. Again, you save this door and I'll save it. So I'll remove that and uh, let us save it. So I'll just grab that, then go to the menu BL for block. Or say go to the tool lot lot definition, and then I'll save this by four by folding door, and I'll put the size six six ninety seven right. And then if I want to access it, go to insert, and it's right here, just like that. So so far I've gone through how to create the plans of these doors. So we have done the double single acting swinging door. We have done the single acting swinging door. So I'll just bring the ones that I've done closer here so that we can have a look right there. That one is there, bring that closer. And then I have done the bifold doors. So now I'm going to draw the elevations now. So let's look at these elevations and see how we can draw them. Now imagine I were to use a standard height and a standard width, which I got from a textbook of, let's look here. So I'm going to be using this, these dimensions here to help me. I'm going to be using 862. And I'm going to be using the height 2040. All right. 
So let us go to that there now. And let's use that as our standard frame size. Alpha line, and I'm just going to, for, oh, let me go back over to my windows and door layer. Alpha line, and I'm going to draw my base. Then I'm going to offset up 20, 40. Then I'm going to create my 800. I create one line here, and then offset 862 to the right or to the left. Right, so this represents my door. And I'm going to try to put everything in there. <laughs> Sounds a bit crazy, but that's it. So for this one, we know this is a double door. So how can we, first I should probably bring this one closer to, to where I'm reproducing that, you know? Not quite the same, but that's probably good so that, you know, we're able to work with a different um, proportion system and we should still get back all this into a nice proportion. So the first thing I need to do is divide my door into two because this has two panels. All right. So let's just have a look here. And... Uh, these two panels aren't even. That's the first thing we recognize. So we need to find out or give ourselves a ratio number of what this is. Uh, I'm going to divide my door firstly into five pieces. Let's see how this works. So divide into five pieces. Okay, so I got my five pieces there. Can I say that this bottom line represents this? No. I don't think five pieces is going to work. Let's go with seven, the IV. And I click there, seven pieces. And I'm going to use this piece here to represent my bottom rail. And I'm going to reuse that there. So that represents these two lines here. So let me just use my indicator here. So I'm trying to get this line here and that line there, right? Right, that's what I'm trying to do by dividing the door and working within a system. So that line there will come up to here. So I'll put a panel there and then the rest will go all the way up something like that. All right, cool. And if you look at this door carefully, you'll realize that the bottom space is larger than the top. And so these little things you can observe while reproducing a door. You don't have to have the exact dimensions, as you say, I don't, and I don't care. I just am drawing an image to represent the door as best as possible without trying to hook up myself with dimension and knowing these dimensions. I just know sizes, a few key sizes, and I'm working like that. All right. <clears throat> so the size here at the top, less, and it's best to arbitrage some of these things too, especially if you're not given any specifications here. So uh, there is 151. You know what? I'm going to make it 150. That's a decent number. So I'm going to offset from the top 150. And yeah. And at the bottom, uh, offset 300, right? And it comes back to just about where it should, right here. So that's good for me. Now, I'm also going to offset 150 at the sides, too. Uh, 50. So I think we got a good start so far. So let me just fill it here. Fill it. So what do we think about that? Uh, I think that can work. Or should I put it to here? You know, what? I'm going to find a halfway between this, this, and this. All right, and I'm going to use that. 
Yeah. <laughs> Then offset one fifteen. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Fill it. Fill it. Okay, I think I can just pull this down slightly because we don't need that to be there. Just let's pull it down about 100. Let's see, that doesn't look bad, it's pretty good. And I'll pull this across and then I'll probably just fill it that to there. All right, yeah, okay, I can live with this tour. I can live with this tour and how it's drawn or how it's set up. Now, what I need to do is we need to create the inner panels. So the first thing is this outer one, I'm going to offset this something like 25. Yeah, 25 there, all around. And then I'm going to come back and offset in 50, offset 50. And then I'm going to connect them together and do some trimming. And that should be it there in terms of the, the detail for the panels. All right. So let's trim this now. It is, I'm trying to create these frames while I'm trimming. All right. Okay. Just created a frame there, frame there. All right. All right, so that's been created now. What we need to do is add these diagonal lines that go to there, go to there, go to here, and you press put in these diagonal lines. And I'm using the line tool, and I'm pressing enter to reactivate the tool once I've finished with it. And yeah. That's good, that looks good. Now, all that we need to do is we need to create the opposite side of this door by mirroring it, right? So I'm going to mirror this door, MI to mirror, select the full door, and this is the mirror line right here. And I create a mirror of the door and they ask me, your source object, yes or no? And I go, no, because I want both to be there. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a big frame on the outside of the door, like what we see here. So I'm not going to get too detailed. I'm just going to put a, a frame of about 50. On the outside of the door. And this could work. And this then would be the base of your door right here. So that could be your frame, your door frame. Usually some people stain the door frame, paint them in a mahogany color. 
or paint them in some color that will stand out from the actual door and the wall, right? That's the door frame there. And these are the two panels. And I am going to create some lock system here by just working with some circles. So let's look at this. This is a circle here. And then this is a cylinder. No, this is a square with a circle at either side. So I think I can do that. Let's do that there now. So first thing, C for circle. And I create a circle here. And then I create like that. Offset that down probably 50. Offset 50. Oh, that's too much. I might need to offset something like that. Let's try 10. See how 10 looks, 10 looks good. But I need to get this in the middle. So if that's my middle, I'm gonna offset five each side, five to the left and five to the right. Okay, cool. And then uh, probably say I want my door handle to come to about here. So I will extend that to there, to there, to there. And now let's create a circle this point. So how can I do that? I can fill it. Yeah. <laughs> I create a circle there. And then in here, let's see how they express the inside. It's the same thing. You create a circle in there and then you trim. So I'll give myself distance that here, fill it. And then fill it that there. And I can take out side pieces there. So now all that's left is to trim this circle. Good, I move this into position now. Obviously I think this is a bit too big, so I'm gonna scale it. So I grab everything, grab, and I scale, and what's my scale factor? Zero point, let's go nine zero. So I just wanted to remove, reduce that by 10%. Still looks a bit big. Or uh, yeah, I think the circle is, this was too big for this. So I put a smaller circle. And let's see if things work out this way. Remove that. That's there, and then we can mirror. Your rear source object, no. No, I think my handles are slightly smaller, but I'll just scale them up. Let's see if I can scale them. Uh, scale them by about 10%. Increase. So that would be 1.10. Yeah, leave it there. Why not? Um, that's pretty much it if you want to draw a door. Obviously, you have to make sure your sizes are, are, are adequate, but you can play around with the sizes by increasing the scale or just reproducing a different circle there at that stage. But to me, that's cool. That's fine. And once the lock, what is the most important thing that needs to go on here? The door swing. Where are the hinges? Now, the hinges of this door are on this side, right? The hinge would be on this side here and that side there. The edges are right, where I can see the boundaries there. So a hinge will go here and a hinge will go here. A hinge will go around here and a hinge will go there. Now, how can we tell that the hinge is on that side? Now, let's look at this arrow. This arrow is pointing us directly to the sides where the hinge is, right? This is an arrow here, pointing us to this side. Pointing us in the direction of where the hinge. It is not pointing us to the location, 
but it's just telling us that the hinge is on the left side for this door. And for this next door, the hinge is on the right side. So this big arrow points to the direction of where the hinge is. It doesn't point to the location of the hinge. So let us now put that in, right? So all we do is we come out here at the top, find the half, and pull that back in there, to there, and then to there. And these are usually represented in dotted lines. Reason being is these are information lines, but these are not lines that make up the door. So when you look at a door, you do not see those lines there. Those lines just give the person that's building the door an additional piece of information that they, that's useful. Useful to know where to set up the hinge, right? Uh, where the hinge is going to go, I should say. Um, let me increase this to two. Let me go five. Or three. Okay, cool. That's a good size. So I'm going to match drop that so that all are the same size. Cool. So this here is my door elevation that I've drawn to match that door. We can draw another elevation here, which is a single panel door. Um, or what we can do which is very easy. We can take one side of this door and bring it down here to represent that. Uh, probably be the best thing to do. We can grab this door and we can bring it down here just like that, All right? And that would represent a single panel. Uh, you always best to use what you have recycled, save the environment, you know? Uh, if you have it, don't reproduce the wheel and waste your time. Just edit and change it into what you need it to be. That also is a skill and you students need to understand that, that skill. So now I don't need this side over here. Nope, so that goes, boom. <clears throat> so that's a single acting swinging door, just like that. And again, if I wanted to save these, I would grab them and then create a block, BL for block. And I will call this um, single, single door. And I'll just do that, All right? It's, so, ah, the good thing about this is if I already have a single door saved, it asks me if I want to redefine or if I want to name it as a new door. So I'll put single door two, right? And let's come here and look for it. Insert, go insert, and you can see single door one, which is right there, and single door two. Single door two is basically the same thing as single door one. So what I would do is just, I would really and truly delete those so that I won't confuse myself. But I would do that at a later point now. I was just showing you guys how to save a door using the block menu and how to find the door once you've saved it. I think I've done that enough. So now I move on to my third door. So what am I going to be drawing here? I'm going to be drawing the bifold doors. So again, let's work with this one so that we can probably bring it more into what, so that we can match back the, the drawing of the example given. So I'll work with this instead of the dimensions I was working with earlier. So let's come here. So from the bottom all the way up, let's go the IM and put some measurements onto this. So from the bottom all the way to the top of this door is 2173. And what's the, the total width? of this door from frame to frame, 2040. So it's 2040 and 2173. 
that, those, that, that, that's what we're working with. Uh, let's see what's the average size of one of these doors. The average size of one of these doors is 458. It's the average size. So let's come here and let's draw that. Alpha line, I'll probably draw it down here. So it's closer to everything, alpha line. But first I need to go over to my windows and door layer. Yep. Alpha line, come here, draw that offset up to 173. Let me create the sides. Offset across 2046. Okay, good. So I got my 2046. That's quite small, but I'll check it. Yep, 2046. And 2173. All right. So let me fill it while I'm here. And one thing I can do is I can um, divide this into four. Let's see what happens. And I divide that into four. And this on average, these are my divisions here. One, two, three. So I see my four doors right there, just like that. Um, now, Let's look at these panels. So let's start at the bottom. It's always best to start at the bottom and taking these measurements for the panels. 235, what's the distance between the sides? 83, 235, what's the height? 660. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to offset first 660. From here, good. And then we're going to offset 235. All right. Cool. So once I've done that, then I'm going to offset 83 from each of these um, horizontal vertical divisions. So that's 83, 83. 83 to the left, 83 to your right, 83 to your left, 83 to your right, 83 to your left, 83, so forth. Now, how does this work? This looks quite confusing. So before I go any further, let me start to trim this now. So I can trim, 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 trim. What I could have done is created one and then copy them into place or do what I'm doing now, just trim all of them simultaneously, right? All right, so let us now Clean these up. So those, this is the panels. Those are the panels there at the bottom. Now let us see the panels for the top, and then we're gonna put the um, details around them, like the framing and stuff like that. So what's the distance between here and here? 190, what's the distance between there? And the top, 1,288. So I'm going to be offset in 190 from here. Offset 190. And then I'm going to be offset in 1,288 from the base from right here. So you get that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in, I'm going to draw one panel in, and then I'm going to copy it 
copy them in. Now, while I'm here, I think I can just as well put in the finer details, like my 25 frame that goes on here. And then we use a 50 frame. 25, let's look here. See 25, and then it seems to use something larger than 50. Let's check here. Oh, this is 37. Oh, well. And 12, 12, 50, and then 37. So they don't even use 25 and 50. All right. But I'm designing this, so I'm using 25 and 50. All right. Cool. So let us go. All right. And why did I use 25 and 50? 25 and 50 to me are what you call capital numbers, easy to remember, right? It's going to be very hard for a student to possibly remember 12 and 37. Yeah, capital numbers, I just called them that. Because I felt like, what do I really mean? Popular numbers, regular numbers that we always come across, you know. Um, yeah. So now let's now put this in. Now let me go copy. So I have the copy on. I move it from this location. So this is my reference point, this endpoint to that endpoint, to this endpoint, and finally to that endpoint. So I have put in, oh no, I didn't put in the tops. <laughs> All right, easy, do the same. Move it from this reference point. Okay, I see what's happening. I never put in this outer frame. That didn't go over. That's the problem. And then that and that. Okay, so I'm going to copy this over and everything should be A-OK -okay now. Right, so now we got ourselves a door. We got ourselves a nice, lovely bifold door. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a frame around them. So how do I do that? Offset 50 is my frame. 50, 50, 50. Let's fill it. So that's my bifolder right here, which goes with the bifold um, plan door that I drew. Not exactly the same. I could have pulled down my lines from there, but I mainly felt like drawing this from this. Some people, another way, some people would have drawn this, they would have projected these lines down and stuff like that. That's another style. Actually, this is probably the best method. Mine was just to show you how to draw the door visually, but this now is going to be very accurate this method that I'm using here, because I'm working with um, points that already exist on the plan. Before I was just working to try and reproduce the elevation. But you see, seeing that we have this over here, I can actually just transfer this down over here. So watch this now, what I'm going to do. I'm going to add in my frames here. Mm -hmm. You have a frame, so let me offset 50. Oh, and up. all right, cool. So now, mm, I want all of these in, and I'm going to copy it from here 
to the center. Aha, you see the problem here now. We now need to make some of these larger. All right, so what's the distance that we wanted from the edge? That was 83. So I now need to create one. Once I create one, I can then copy them all around. So I'll just grab one of these and line that up there. So in here, which is like that, right? Let's go stretch, S-T-R-E. It's a new tool I'm moving, stretch, S-T-R-E, enter. And what am I gonna stretch? I'm going to green grab all of this, select it, and then pull it over to there, just like that. That's how we stretch things, all right? Now I'm going to select the two of these and remove them. And now I can copy everything into place now. CO, copy, and this is my reference point. There, to there, to there, to there. All right. So those, that's how I actually change what I've drawn here over to something which is more accurate. All right. So I'm just cleaning the, the frame because these lines wouldn't be seen on the inside of the frame. These lines just wouldn't be there. So I think this looks good. This represents the door properly. Um, this one represents the door, as in that image, this one represents the door based on the construction technique of projecting the lines from the plan down to the elevation, down and create an elevation. So you project the lines down from the plan um, and you create this elevation. This is typical autographic projection, typical autographic projection. Nothing too hard to understand, right? So I'll delete this because this might be a bit misleading. And that's the door we will keep, right? So that represents the bifold, the bifolding doors. All right. So, so far we have drawn, we have discussed the door types. We have drawn door symbols, both in plan and elevation. So now we move on to parts of the door at this stage. And uh, let us go down here now. So this is a, okay, let's use the knowledge that we have here. This is a panel door, right? Uh, how many panels do we have here? We have four panels right here, four panels. So the first thing is, let us identify these different parts and I'm going to highlight them as we go through them so that everyone will be able to understand. This right here is the top rail of the door. And this here, these are called the mountain. So I'll put this in a different color now. Then we go to the mountain. Mountain here, all right? These are the mountain. So that would also be down here, mountain. And <clears throat> we go to style. Put that in a different color. Right here. So that will be over here. All right. And the thing that we probably got from today's class that we will probably not forget are how to identify and where to identify the panels. So these are the panels here. Panels. So what I'll do is I would color code the panels. And this one here that I left, I'll put in right, and this will be the cross rail or lock rail. That's the cross rail there, or lock rail. This one here in green, oh, this is style. This is the mountain. And then this is the top rail. And the top rail also 
happens down here, you know? I guess for some people, you might consider that the bottom rail, but that is still the top rail part. So those are the parts of a door there. One, two, three, four, five. Five parts that you have to remember, right? This is a typical question that can come up in CXC in the sketch and design section. They might ask you simply to draw a door and label the five parts or to state five parts, well-known parts of a door. And you can place the top rail, you can identify the mountain, the cross rail or lock rail, and then the panels. So that's how you will get your marks there for a question like that, all right? So let us move on from here now. <clears throat> We're gonna move on to some door details, very important. Door details. So what I have done here to these door details, I have increased them by five times. So in other words, this is a five time increase of the detail. This is what the original detail looks like here in the corner, I'll highlight it. That's the original size. And I just increased it five times for uh, viewing purposes so that we can all look at this together and try to understand this detail. So we are drawing a door. And we're drawing what happens when we take a section through the door. So where is this head detail taken? Well, the head detail is taken from the top. The head um, states the top. Even if you're thinking in terms of human body, the head is at the top. So this is a detail at the top. And I will just highlight which part of the door you would find this. This is where the door connects. This is the door here, as it will connect to the wall or how it would interact with the wall. So that's what we're going to be focusing on, this head detail. And uh, one thing that I would state right now on the drawing is where is inside and where is outside. Now, where is on the inside? Where is on the outside? This could be considered inside and that could be considered outside. So I can have here, this is outside, outside. This could be inside, inside, why? <clears throat> How did I determine whether that is outside from whether that is inside? Well, simply, this here is something which is called a doorstop. And I will start with this point here. This is a doorstop. Let's turn down the size of my arrows. This here is the doorstop right here. What does that do? That allows the door when you shut it to stay into that position. So it'd be very hard for a person to be outside here and kick in this door and kick against this force because this door stop here at this point is stopping the door from going past that point, right? Which is a good thing. So this works for security reasons. So I'm going to clear this now and I can just put here this door stop right here, this little junction here, this is good for security reasons. Good for security reasons, All right? Hard for someone to enter the home. However, now, let us analyze it from this side, which is the inside. So this is on the inside which is inside here. Let's analyze what can happen. In the case of an emergency, now and there's a fire, and uh, you want to get out of your house to get away from, you know, a blaze or whatever. There's a blazing fire. You can come here, and you should be able to push against this door. And you should be able to push against this door, and because the way how the condition is set up, it is more likely that you'll be able to go in this direction here and kick the door out and escape. So that's how you can tell where the inside is and the outside is when viewing a detail, all right? Over here, this will be the, ins this will be the inside here pointing in, and uh, this will be the outside here. That will be the outside there by the rectangle that I've just drawn for that detail. That happens at the bottom. 
So this is where your foot comes off of the, so I'll just explain this. <clears throat> this is where you'll be walking on this detail. You'll be walking here and then stepping up there and going into the house. So that would be your path. You will be coming from this direction, step up and then go into the house. That's your path moving from inside to outside. So that is outside here. So that would be inside. And for these ones, this is outside here, outside. So that's the first thing that we want to focus on, the door stops. So that's the door stop there. And as we can tell, this element here is our solid door, right? This is our solid door that I'm going to highlight. This is the door. This is the door on the jam, and this is the door on the sill. All right. Now, let us go past now this. So we already got the door stop, which is this detail here, which is the door stop. But what happens underneath the door stop? Underneath the door stop, there's a layer of marker. I'll put that in in gray. Or in kind of a white. This is the mortar. This is the layer like the plaster under there. And what is that doing? That is actually connecting. Sorry, that there is not in plaster. That is a piece of plywood that is connecting the, that is connecting this straight into here. So that secures that in there, right? That is how that has been secured. And that is secured in there and this is a framing piece. This that I'm pointing at now is a framing piece of wood that is there, which before that is used, sorry, that is used to receive the lintel. And this is the lintel above, which is just pure concrete in there. So all that is, is directly above the door. We have a, an area where we have four concrete. A lot of concrete just goes in there. A lot, a lot of concrete goes in there so that you can prepare if you need to for the floor above the doorway. If you say you want to put a floor, like say this was in a two-story building and this is the ground floor we're looking at, you might need to put a floor somewhere above here. So, you know, for people to walk on. So this would be what we would consider the lintel beam, but that lintel beam might be beefed up more, might be a bit thicker. What's so, what's not. Anyway, on the outside of the lintel, we have our plaster. Why do we need to plaster? I'll put that in blue. So this is our plaster here. Why do we need to plaster? We need to plaster because while building the wall, probably there's a few areas where there are defects. It might be the concrete is not consistent. And the plaster is the layer that you're going to put on before you paint the wall. So that is you want to smoothen the wall you have created from concrete or from block work. And before you paint the wall, you have a layer of plaster where you will come back there with some cement and you would smoothen the wall, just smoothen the wall until it is very smooth and the material is very consistent. Then that's when you know it's ready to be painted. All right. So we have identified the plaster. I'm going to go back through this now. We have identified the lintel. That is the lintel there. I'll highlight that. And we have something called a molding. Now, I didn't touch on that. A molding is like a finisher. A finisher. So, probably put that there in a circle. And this is the molding right here. And you realize it has a design to it. Uh, it goes in, it slopes. There's a slope to it. That's all just for style. Uh huh. That's just the style of the molding. So, I'll highlight that so we can see, all right? It slopes there on the molding. That's just the style. Now the molding, what the molding does is the molding hides the detail of when the door head, which is right here, interacts with this piece of timber, which receives the nails from the door head or the glue or what is holding that up, and then receives the frame, this piece of wood frame. All of that that goes on in here and this untidiness that might go on around here and as you're trying to get it back smooth, the molding hides that from your eyes. 
So the molding is a nice little piece of a frame that goes over the door that hides the imperfections as the detail is put together. So that's what the molding is um, there. And it's nicely decorated so that when you look at it, you will not actually see any imperfections that might happen underneath there. So that's why I say the molding is a finishing piece, right? So this is how a door head is assembled. Now, what is this, the door jam? Now, you might not understand a door jam. It looks exactly similar to the door head, other than the difference is over here is block work, and over here, these are the, the two differences there. Over there is a lentil beam because that's directly above the head. I don't think anybody would want to put blocks like that and leave them there. You're rather concrete because the concrete can settle. And while it settles, it's very strong. The blocks will always be a permanent weight. All right. Over there, the concrete can settle and span from one distance to another distance. And the blocks wouldn't. It's just an easier and a safer technique. So where does this take place? This takes place at the sides of the door. So if I just look at a door that down here that we have, let's imagine this isometric for a second. And this is where the jam would be. The jam would be anywhere on the sides here or on the side of the door, where the door actually meets the wall. So if I were to continue to draw a wall here, I'll just try to express it like that. Like that. Yeah. That will be the jam, right? That will be the jam. You understand? So that's the wall there. If you were to go through the door, and that was where the jam would be, where I have highlighted in red. Now the head, as I'm going to highlight it in white, will be around here. Now, let's go with this. This is where the head would be, around here, right? That's where the head is, and that's where the jam is. So where would the sill be? The sill be at the bottom. So let's put that in blue. This would be the sill area down here. This is where you'll find the sill in that region. <clears throat> so this would be for the sill. That's the detail you would use for the sill. This is the detail that you would use for the jam to coincide with the red. And this is the detail that you will use for the head. So those are where our three details are and where you can locate them on a door. And all of them basically discuss how the door interacts with the wall or the condition next to it. It might be a timber wall, it might be a concrete wall, but they all show how the door interacts. So why is the jam similar to the head? Because the conditions are the same as they go around the door. There's no difference. The only difference is the sill. So the idea is once you have drawn a jam, you know how to draw a head, all right? All you have to do is change. Well, what I've done is I've changed the pattern here from concrete to block work. So that's a major difference. Also, what I've done, I've seen in some details when I did my research, they used two framing boards. So this is another difference here. I'll highlight that. I'll probably highlight that in yellow. That's the difference here. There are two framing members compared to one framing member here. Again, that is subjective. So if you put in one framing member, I don't think that will be a big problem, you know? Shouldn't be an issue, right? But these elements are the same. I mean, put that, let me highlight the elements that are the same. These elements here. Those are the same. These are all the same. The door is the same. It's the same door we're cutting through. The same molding. The molding goes right around as a frame. You know, a picture frame. Imagine a picture frame if you cut through it at the top of the picture frame, you cut through it at the sides, you will see the same expression. That's one way to look at it. So those two details are the same. Nothing changes there. And lastly, we have our sill detail. And let's look at our sill detail and see where it changes. Well, this is the outside ground. So let's highlight this as the ground there so. And we'll highlight in here as some form of a tile, you know? So give it a nice green, green tile. 
and there's where our tails would be. So just put the tail over there. So you're coming from the outside in. So a person's gonna be traveling in this direction, come out here, pass the threshold, and you go in. Why do we have a threshold here? Well, if it rains, we don't want any rainwater to come in the house. So this provides a nice little area if you don't, you don't have proper drains, the worst case scenario is down there, the water might settle. You know, that's worst case scenario, but still, even if it settles down there, it takes a while before it can actually get in to your house. That is probably how tall the water would have to rise, you know. So that differentiates and puts a difference between the ground and where your floor level is. You know, that's a step up then for if you guys understand it that way. But that's the purpose of the step up though, so that you can't get any water and also for security purposes and just to celebrate that you are moving from one transition of outside to inside. Now, how do we build this setup? Now, again, we have our framing joint, framing header, which is right here, our header, a frame. And then behind the frame, we have our bricks. So we have bricks here, so I'll put those in gray. Those will represent the, the material. That is our bricks. And uh, the idea of this was just set up so that we have a slope. So why all that frame and everything was set up is because we want a slope. Some people do this in concrete. So you might see some books have this in concrete. I have it in bricks here. This is the slope we want here. We want that slope. And we put our member of wood here. And then what we do is we can probably just shave off that. So, so this is a member of wood that is actually installed in there. So the piece of timber is created with that slope there. And then it is actually, you know, so if I take this away, you would understand. Good. That's a member there, a piece of timber that is created and it's slotted in right there to receive the door when it comes down at the bottom, all right? And then from here on, what else do we see in the detail? This is where our concrete would be, where we would stand up on our finished floor. Our finished floor would be right here. So I'll put that in some form of a white or gray. That'll be our finished floor there, the concrete floor. And then directly above, we would have our tiles, all right? So that's it, basically, for that detail. Nothing too hard there when you're looking at it, right? <clears throat> so that's called the threshold detail, or this can be called the sill detail. Why you say the threshold? Because it's, that is the transition from the outside to the inside, where in terms you have to respect it because you have to step up. These are the details you don't have to, is, they're not always, the condition is not always that you move from one outside the inside and you step up. You know, sometimes there's a clean, there's one level. So sometimes it might be like that and where you don't have a threshold. So the, you have a threshold here and this is called the sill detail. All right. So I think I've explained these as best as I could. No, we need to draw these. So I have them over here. And what I'm going to do is quickly draw and then I'm going to show you how I increase them, how I increase the scale by five. All right, so let's get over to this now. <clears throat> Alpha line and let's start drawing. Uh, how am I gonna draw this? All right, I wanna draw this on this side. So we're creating this on a one to 50 wall offset, 150 millimeters. That's 150 there. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a horizontal a random point. And I think this is also, what's the distance up here? So what I'm gonna do is leave the distances here as I insert them. Oh, no, 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 that is too large. I need a smaller dimension. You know what? I should have had a smaller dimension set up at this point here. 
that's 75. And that there's so. uh is 150, right? So that's 150 and that in there is 75. So what that means is I just offset 75. That's up 75. What's the distance from the plaster wall? The plaster wall distance is a distance of 10. So that's 10 on each side. So come here, offset 10 millimeters, 10 to the left, 10 to the right. So that's my plaster wall in, right? Now, what's my molding? I need to bring my molding out and give it and treat it as a complete study rather than try to crowd it right here. So I'm going to just drag a molding from here. So I'm going to copy this out. I'll grab that. And bring that on this side here. Close it. And let's give this a study so that we can see what this molding is. DIM for dimensions. From there to there is 20. From there down is 95. And we're going to just dimension there. And across there is 51. So that's something that should be easy to make. Not too much of a problem. Mm -hmm. And then you just mirror it on the opposite side. And that's how you get it. So the first thing I do is I'm going to try to clean up this joint here. Trim. Clean up, clean up, clean up, clean up. Okay. Also, this piece of plaster under here. Also, ten. Fill it to there. Fill it to there. The head. Let's put in the molding first before we go to the head. All right. So where does the molding go? Let us see. Does the molding is the molding directly in line here? Nope. The molding is actually there's a slight distance between here and the molding. So I'll just try to grab that distance quickly. The eye. That distance is something like oh. That's 8.07. That's a very short distance, small distance. So what I'll come here and do is just offset that. Pull that out so we know where my molding goes. Offset 8.07. Come down. Great. So I can pull this molding in and put it in here. But I know everybody probably wants to see me make this. So I'll start off with a horizontal line. Then I offset it down 95. Then I just pelt in a random vertical line here. Then I offset that 20. And then I offset this one 51 from the top. All right, and that's where it meets. And then there's some small distance between here. Let's grab this distance quickly. That distance is 5.13. So that's a small distance of five. So I can even just offset five to keep it clean. No, I got to offset it on the other side. Five. All right. So I can connect from here to there. And that's my modem. All right. So I can pull this out and trim this whole thing. Grab that. Clean it there. And then I can snap in my modem and copy it. So I grab that. And that will go right here. Yeah. But that's where that's supposed to go. I had that mark out there. So now you can pull this back to here. That's done its purpose. So that's the molding in. Now what we need to do is the same thing. We'll study the doorstop. So I will grab the doorstop and copy it and bring it out. And let us study it over here. So let's move this down here. So right now at this stage, this is my doorstop and I'm gonna put some measurements around it so that you guys at home can follow around. So that's 170, come down, 25, come down, 
57 on this side. That's the distance from there, 38. So I'm going to draw this right now on the spot so this doesn't confuse anyone. So the first thing is I draw a line across and I draw a line down. From here, I should be able to find my way around. So I'm going to offset. The first offset is to offset 170 to the left. So I offset from here, 170, I get that distance. Then I offset 25. That's 25 on that side. And what's this going to go across something like 57. So it's going to offset the, the right 57 from here. 57, yep, so that's where that 57, that 25 go. So I can clean that up so I don't get mistaken. That goes, and that goes something like that. All right, very good. And then the next distance is 38. So I'm gonna offset 38 from the left, going to the right, 38. Now, there's a small distance here that I need, which is from there down to there. And that is also 25. So you're going to offset another 25 down. And then fill it this now. So I got everything under control. So that line. No, that is not. That is actually 38 up. So it offset 38 up from here. Or is it? The A, that's 25. So we're just 38 reading. Oh, I get that out of 38 reads. Okay. okay. So that's it there, right? So let me just match drop and put it into the proper layer. One time, this will be door stop. And I'll just put that in now. Grab that and move it. And let's see, how do we stamp this in? Where does this go? Huh? This goes directly under here. Right, so that's my door stop in. And what I can do is I can mirror this detail and mirror the molding over onto from the left hand side to the right. So I'll do that now. So that's our mirror. And I've mirrored that over there. Very good. And then what I'm going to do is just create an imaginary baseline here where all these lines will go down to the ground. So we grab this line and I'm going to copy it. So you're going to see a point there in the background, a point there in the background, there, 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 and then here too. Yep, there here. All these are little points that you will see in the background. So I'll put them in the hatch layer because that's a, a lighter layer. Those things you will see in the background. All right. Those are the lines as the frame goes down the side of the wall. That's how it will be expressed. You'll see that there in the background. Yeah. Okay, good. So now we need to create the door in here. What is the size of the door? DI. My door there is 50. So that's an average door 50. 50 millimeters thick, right? So what I can do is offset 50 from this line. Save myself some time. 50. And what is the space in between DI? Sometimes I use DI just to get a quick measurement. Right down here is seven. So I know I can offset seven from the top so that to make it consistent. And I just clean it up like that. Right. So then this is my frame. And this is, sorry, that's my door stop. This is my door. And that is how I would draw that. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these now because we no longer join. I no longer need those. The wall again is 150. 
if you need them, you can just re rewind the video. I'm just removing those elements there. So this also is a head and a jam in one. Head and jam in one. So all I'll do is I'll just put the X through here. I won't bother to put these into their proper layers or anything so because I already have a detail here on the screen. So I would just let you know this is the head detail. And this also can act as a jam detail. Now this is the sill detail here right now. All right. We won't bother to draw that. Uh, you can just create an angle down here and it's fairly simple. I'll leave that for you guys to explore and to draw and to come up with. What I'm really going to go now to is the last thing before I close off the video. So I'm just going to delete these, delete these. And the last thing which we want to go through is a flush door, sorry, a frame ledge and brace door. So to the left, you see a flush door and these are both isometric projections. And I have them all labeled. You can see the hard wood edge on the flush door where it's located, the plywood facing, the thickness is six mil and the thickness in, is right in here. So I just probably hatch there so you can guys can recognize where you're talking about the thickness. The thickness comes in here. That's the thickness. That is six mil. And then the hardwood or softwood laminating, right? That is right here, right? So this is the final material of the door. That is the hard or the softwood. Now, what happens when we look at how a door is put together. So if we study a frame ledge and brace door, let's look at this door. So this already has the same rails and the same information I was telling you about, which is the, that is the top rail. So I think there's a word over here, door, you gotta try and get out this door. Now, so over here you would find the top rail and you will find here style. And then you will find here the brace. This is a cross brace, as you can see on the outside. And this is what it will look like behind the material hiding all this on the inside. So this is where the material is introduced right here. So all this is the material that is actually going to hide the door, uh, hide all the members of the door here. And here we have the middle rail. Here we have the boards removed to show the construction. So this is the boards right here. All right, those are the timber boards. And we have here the match board, which is right here. And the style joint is called a mortise and tenon joint at corners of frames. So that's the style they are using, a mortise and tenon. All right. So that's how this door is created. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to do this door quickly. So you guys at home would see, and we would end off here. So this was a full session and this would bring the end to both the doors and the window session. I hope you guys checked out the windows. If not, you should go back there and check it out. Before we end off, let us just dimension here, some rough dimensions, and again, this, I would have drawn this at a five times increase. So what I'm going to do is draw it at the increase rather than scale it down and draw it. So the last time I scale, I work from the original size. Now I'm going to work from the increased size and work this thing in, all right? So that's the first thing there. That is the dimensions we're going to be using, 2586 by 6120, the 6120 is the height, the 2586 is the width. We're gonna go onto our isometric mode, but I just wanna check something. I want to probably write down some key dimensions that I'm going to need. So I'm going to DIM. Now what's this here? So now that there is coming into about, not getting an accurate dimension that way. So just go DI. And I will take the dimension doing this.
and there to there is 20. See, that's very simple. So the material on the outside is 20. What's the distance for each strip? Each strip is 375 by 20. So that's something that we can start to put in now. So let's start drawing this. But first, before I do that, I'm going to go over to my polar tracking. That's where I'm going to be drawing that. Let's turn that on. And I'm going to make sure that I'm on the 30, 60, 90, 120 degree options that stick. So I'm good to go. So I'm going to start now, alpha line. And I'm going to draw this line up. Draw it up 90 degrees, 6, 1, 2, 0. And I go across, and I go across on the 30 degree line axis. A 30 degree path, 86, no, sorry, 2586 is the next distance I put in and bring this back down here. I'll bring it back down, 6120, and bring it back home there. All right, that's good, nice and cool. Now, what do we got to do with that? I'm going to offset this frame backward so that I can get the thickness. So, see this as the outside of the door as the exact frame, sorry, the outside final finish as the door, and I'm going to work backwards, right? So in other words, let me just come here to the drawing, and I'll probably be able to explain this better. See what I have done as I've drawn this, this face. That's the face I've drawn so far. So I'm going to be offsetting this and going backward, and I'll always be going that way, right? So that's what I'm going to do. So that distance that I'm going to be using is a distance of 20. So I'm going to offset that now, 20, and go in. So that's while I'm here, you can grab some new distances. All right, DI. That's 20. This whole thing there, so is 93. And then again, 20. So that's 20, 93, 20. All right. So I'm going to grab a line here. And I go in that direction, 150 degrees, 20. Let me just draw up a line there to start me off. 150 degrees, distance 93. Let me just draw up a line there to start me off. And I go about um, 20, 150 degree distance. Direction, sorry, 150 degree direction. So let me just copy these lines in place, no one. Two, three. So I have put those in place there, right? And I have put these ones in place. I can just go across 150 degree direction, some random distance. And why am I saying that? Because I'm going to extend all of these to that back line, right? And they connect there. And then what I can do is at this point here, I can fill it, I have to fill it and fill it. That edge there. So I have in all the layers to complete the door. All right. That's a good thing. So as I say, I'm going to build this from the front and go back. And I know the distance of one of these um, boards right here. The final uh, material is, I think, 375. Just let me confirm here. Yep. 375 is the distance that I'm going to use. So <clears throat> So I'm going to copy this in that direction, 375. All right. And then what do I want to do now with this? Interesting, interesting. I can copy. I can select that, select that object, and come here, click there, and then go to the option array. So I'll press A to array, and enter the number. So I'll just put in a number like 7. Seven, and I just array them in like that. Right. Seven actually worked pretty good. <laughs> so I just click that out oh, and remove that. So that's six in. Now, that is the outside finish you would see to the door. But we want to cut this material at a, round, a random point. So just cut it right here. And that's what we're going to do. So you're going to cut right here. Trim. And what am I going to do? I'm going to put, I'm going to probably bring it to here. So fill it here. All right. All right. So that's where I'm going to cut. What am I going to do? I'm going to take my 
position here. I'll copy it. Grab these two lines and bring them down here to that cut point. All right. And then that represents the thickness of my board. I think I doubled up on one of these things, so move that. All right. Come over here. Yeah. So that's what you would see. So I need to reduce these lines because these are trim, right? This material is trim. You're no longer seeing this material here. So we're gonna study this by going inside at this point, right? So at this point now I need to represent this line. So as I can divide the material on plan right here, right there, right there, right there. Actually, no, I got to move these, put them in at the wrong position. So let's put them in here. Yeah. And let's trim this material. All right. We trim that off there. See how it's easy to read and understand now at this stage? Good. So that's in. Cool. And what's happening behind here now? Now what's the, so what do I want to find? I want to find out this distance. So I can put in this member. This member is this. All right, so I go DI. That's 303. Offset, three oh, no, I'm going to draw a line. I don't have an offset in this menu. So I go 303. And then I'm going to project this downward. That's there. So I'm going to trim it down here. Remove that line. And let's see the top rail now. What's the distance to the top rail? So come here and I measure that. That distance there is something like 600. So let's put in the top rail at 600. What's the distance between the top rail and the middle rail? That is 2,470. So you're gonna come down 600 and then go down 2,470. So let's get the 600 out the way quickly. 600. All right, start off that to probably there, yep. And then come down now from there, 2470. Cool, and pull this back to here. All right, cool. I didn't need this line, but I just did that. All right, and I can project that there and then trim it. So I can trim this and I can trim that. Now, What's the next step? The next step now is what's the thickness of the middle rail? So let's find this out here, DI. 600 again, 600 the thickness of the middle rail. So let us come down here, bring down a line, 600. And then we project it in this direction and that's it. So that's our 600 line there, which represents the top rail. And we have already placed the middle rail, so both rails are in now. But we need to give this whole thing a thickness. So how much is this going to go back by? This thickness goes back a distance of 93. We should have known that from previously. But anyway, so I'm going to project a line out in this direction. Uh, uh, direction 150, 90, 93. All right. So once I've done that, what I think I can do is copy these lines now, CO for copying, move them to here and then trim them. All right, move them to there, cool, and then trim. Or fill it this line to there. I think I'll fill it, that's a better option, but I'll trim down here. Grab here and I'll trim. And then I'll go here and I'll trim. Or I can even fill it. Fill it, trim, no trim. Yeah, trim is a better option there. All right. So that's in, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in the brace. 
this is the brace here, which connects the top rail to the middle rail, but it's connected diagonally. So what is the brace distance? The brace distance is, let's measure from here over to here. And that is 490. I just call it 400. And let us see our um, thickness of it. 93 again. Should have known. <laughs> 409. So let's come here and pull this across. 409. Or we could have called it 400. And then I am going to project this down. Now, how am I going to do this? What angle am I going to use? Let's observe the angle they use by clicking, right clicking. So the first thing is I click to highlight, then right click to open up a sub menu. Then I go to properties and then I want to see the angle. The angle is 248. That's the angle he used there. So I can come over here, click, and I can set up a 248 angle by pressing shift less than symbol and type in 248 angle and it will give me a 248 angle right because i demanded that there so let's check mine to see what this is mine is a 248 angle down here yep so that's in property i like that nice and easy so let's get out of this property menu cool good now the next thing now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, draw perpendicular from here in this direction 93 the distance, then I'm going to copy that. So you grab that, seal for copy, and put it there. That is just for me to get the thickness. Once I get the thickness, I can trim, right? Trim off there, there, and those go nice and easy. So that's the thickness there of that. And I need to bring that back to the corner where it started. So I'm going to do seal for copy and pull this right back here because it started in the corner. So let's clean up the corners and let's clean up other areas. Grab the whole thing in the trim menu. It's gone. All right, what we're gonna do is extend this piece of wood now so that it would hit here. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, what do I need to do now? I can grab this same brace and I can slot it in down here instead of drawing over the whole thing. So that's what I'll do to save time. So we grab that and then we go copy, go to the corner, snap from corner to corner there. All right, what are we gonna do now? We're gonna trim. Trim, 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 trim. All right, so it looks all nice and clean. So right there, let's remove this. And <clears throat> that's our isometric coming, coming to life. Now, so now what do we need? Now we need to finish off by putting in the details here at the top. So what's the distance of this here now, of this member? This member is 300. That's the distance of 300. And this is the expression here at the top that they use. 300, then you go in 29, then you come up in that direction, 17, and then you go across 34, and you go across 17, and then you go across 29. You know what? I'll grab this, copy it, and I'll just stick this in. All right, so let's go there again. See you for copy and grab it from here, and I got it. So just bring it and randomly put it here. And when I get my 300 in, so I go up in this direction, 300. Yeah, so you know this is where this is going to go. So you for copy, or I could have moved it, because I don't need it anymore after that, I don't think. And I just put that in there, All right? <clears throat> so we do the same thing on the opposite side here as well. Bring this down, and then you get 300. Unfortunately, we can't draw this, but I'm wondering if I can do this. Come on. 
kind of doing a long version of a mirror. What's this distance? The A. 17, right? 17, and we go across there, right? So I think we got this spot in now. Let me see. Fill it there to there, fill it to there, fill it to there, fill it that to that. Right. Missing a line across to there, fill it there to there, fill it that to that, pull this away. Cool. So I've reflected it just like that. So once I got that, I could copy it now. So it's a good thing why I didn't destroy it because I needed it in the end here. I put that in and then I can remove these two lines and that's in there nicely. All right. That's the member that fits in between. And that it would be our door isometric. Now, I did not show the areas that are hidden because I already have them here on the left. I just wanted to roughly and quickly go through how to draw the door isometric. I'll put them onto the same line so that this will be on close by and we can just look at them and compare. All right, so this needs cleaning up right here. And I think that's it. Mm -hmm. So over here in the middle version is the finished one with the hidden lines, the hidden lines in red showing the material that goes beneath, that goes underneath the layer of the boards on the outside. But this would be a door isometric, a simple door isometric that can get you a lot of marks. If a CXC were to ask you, CXC question were to ask you to draw an isometric of a door and label it. So you can draw this in the sketch and design section. And again, the labels, the top rail, that's the top rail here. There's this style. There's the brace. There's the middle rail. There's the boards to show construction. And then there is so let's go through this now finally. This is the top rail style. This is the brace. This is the middle rail. Boards. Uh, the construction vertical boards. This is the final finish. And these are connected using a mortise and tenon joint or joints, joints at corners of frames. So that's this that we look here, the mortise and tenon joint, right? All right. Now, this brings us to the end of our door tutorial. This was a long tutorial, and I'm going to advise people to take this in chunks. You know, do not try to sit down and do this all one time. To recap, what did we do today? We looked at door symbols. We looked at door types. We looked at door elevations. We draw a few doors in plan. We draw a couple of them in elevations. We did some door details and uh, we did a, an isometric of a door showing what how the door is made how it's put together on the inside all right now lastly what i can do before i close off here is i can scale this up so that everyone can see i use a scale factor of five so i scale how did i scale sc is the menu to bring the scale enter select the objects enter to select and then i specify a base point so I'll come here at this end point click then i hit five point enter that is it that's my scale of five all right like that now thanks for joining this tutorial and if you didn't check out my windows tutorial go and check it out right now and if you haven't been if you haven't subscribed to the channel please take this opportunity to subscribe to the channel and lastly practice practice to get yourself perfect all right i am out